Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my webinar, Be Resourceful Using Technology and Networking Skills to Find a Job. My name is Kim Mirabelli, and I hope over the next hour you'll learn some interesting information that will help you understand social networking a bit more, um, also how to get connected, as well as determine how recruiters are using the Internet to find you as well as other viable candidates for different positions. I personally love networking. I find it invigorating, and it's really helped me make some valuable career moves. I have plenty of Kappa examples of my networking. Through networking with a Kappa and a Philadelphia Alumni Association, I learned about the training and organizational development master's program at St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia. I enrolled the following fall and started my career change from public accounting into HR consulting. At a Beta Province meeting, I learned about the Kappa Trainer Program. And many years later, I'm obviously still involved. And by reaching out to many of my colleagues and friends in 2002, I obtained many names of contacts at different companies that I was interested in and reached out to them through these personal contacts. Now, of course, that last example was only through email and phone. I can only imagine um, if I had had an online social network, my opportunities probably would have been endless. So hopefully over the next um, hour you'll see how social networking can really help you make connections easier. So let's start by going through the agenda. First, we're going to define what social networking is, and then I'm also going to provide you some various statistics that um, will probably show you that social networking is probably here to stay. We're also going to talk about how to brand yourself, um, in particular through, um, through social networking. I'm going to show you how recruiters are using social networks, and then we'll just go through some final thoughts. So what is social networking? A social network is a social structure made of individuals or organizations called nodes. And these are tied or connected by one or more specific types of interdependency. And that can be a friendship, a kinship, a financial exchange, or a relationship of beliefs and knowledge, or maybe prestige. In short, it's just methods for individuals and companies to have a two-way communication. Now, this doesn't apply to just technological networking, which is mostly what we're going to talk about today, but it also applies to the networking that we do every day. So before I jump into the statistics, I'd like to show you a YouTube video that I think will show that um, social networking is probably not just a fad.
as you can see, um, I think we can tell that social networking has quite an influence on our lives based on those statistics that we just saw. So before we go any further, I'd like to start with a polling question. And this is about which social networks do you belong to? And these are not the online social networks, but rather these are social networks that we're probably much more familiar with. So book clubs, professional meetings, those that are in person, campus activities and groups, mentoring, or more than one of the above. Now for those that are viewing this recorded webcast, unfortunately we could not record it during the session, so this is a post the actual session, so there'll be no responses here. However, during the session, 100% said more than one of the above. This is not surprising. Um, number one, everyone's on this call, so um, it's not surprising that those viewing are much more social and trying to advance their networking. But given the fact that many of us are in Kappa or we have you know, professional meetings that are in person, we would imagine that there is more than one of the above. And another question that I'd like to go through now, now it's which online social networks do you belong to? Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Plaxo, or various search engines like YouTube, Google, Yahoo. And again, um, this is a recorded session, so we don't have the answers. So I will close it and let you know that there was a good range of um, people that were on Facebook and LinkedIn, about 45% in each. There was probably 20 to 30% in Twitter. And then there were none in Plaxo. And Plaxo is like an online directory to help you manage your contacts. Um, it's not surprising that, the, um, that there were no, um, nobody in Plaxo because it's still not as well known. Okay, so let's go through how many members are actually in each of these social networking um, sites. And this is from Wikipedia from back in October. So as you can imagine, these numbers have probably grown since then. So in Facebook, we have 350 million plus. MySpace is 130 million, although that is starting to decrease because of the introduction of Facebook. MySpace has not been as successful since Facebook came online. Twitter is 75 million. LinkedIn is 53 million. And Plaxo, which I was just speaking about, is only 15 million, but it is growing. So again, these numbers are really showing how much social network has really become the face of our society, as well as in recruiting. And I think we probably all saw that when we were viewing the video. So let me start to go through some of the stats now. Um, these statistics actually came from a social recruitment survey issued by JobBite, which is a recruitment solutions provider. And so on the following couple slides, you'll see some statistics from a partic this particular survey. And um, also, please note in the um, lower section there, they have, um, I have the uh, sources where I've gotten much of my information. So rather going through that on every slide, Please take a look at the bottom left and you'll see where um, the information actually came from. So in this particular site, what we're trying to show here is how recruitment and human resources is really using many of these sites to solicit candidates. So 76% of the companies said they're using LinkedIn. 67% they're using various search engines such as Google or YouTube or Yahoo. 44% are using Facebook and 21% are using Twitter. Additionally, about 24% of the candidates are also disclosing their social networking presence when they're applying for the job. So many times they're putting it on their resumes. You'll also see in a few minutes how important then it really is to brand yourself appropriately on one or more of the sites that we're talking about. Now because recruiters are using these sites much more often, your info should be kept updated and censored. You certainly don't want a compromising post on Facebook or a video on YouTube to hurt your chances at an opportunity um, at a particular company. We will talk about that a little bit later on. Okay, 
So some more statistics. Again, um, this is from the social recruitment survey issued by JobBite. And this data clearly shows that employees, and most specifically recruiters, are actively using social networks, such as Facebook and Twitter, as a major source for finding candidates. And this may help a company reduce some of their costs around using job boards and search firms. And the job boards are the Career Builder and Monster.com. And search firms are actual firms that are, are paid to go out and find you viable candidates. The survey did indicate that internal transfers and direct employee referrals are still the best source for candidates. So as you can see, 76% of the company's survey still plan to invest in employee referrals. And that usually comes in the form of a referral bonus to the employee. So the good thing is the, the companies are still trusting their employees to find the best candidates. However, you can't find all candidates this way. So they are then, you know, 72% are planning to invest more in recruiting through the social networks and really making it part of their strategy. And 80% of the companies are planning to use social networks to find or attract um, candidates. Now, LinkedIn grew from 80% in 2008 to 95% in 2009 of the companies who were surveyed. And Facebook grew quite a lot from 36% to 59% in 2009. And then finally, Twitter is coming up at the end, and they're ranking at third at 42%. But from what I'm seeing, Twitter is becoming a much more preferred tool in recruiting as well as for candidates. And I will touch on that in a few minutes. So who's using these social networks? Um, when I go through this, think about you know, sort of what generation you're in and if, it, if it's viable and if it's true um, and, and accurate. So Generation X are those that were born between 1965 and 1980. And they have characteristics of being very self-reliant, more tribal, community-oriented. And then they're also collaborative and like to connect with people. So it's easy to see why they may like the social networking sites, even though it's not face-to-face, -face, but because of that connection that it provides. Without a doubt, they would prefer to be face-to-face, -face, but they do understand the social network now to connect with people. Now, Generation Y are those that have been born 1981 to 1995, and they have the characteristics of being very confident, impatient, <laughs> socially conscious, and of course, technically savvy. They want to connect to everything. So obviously due to this, they, it's even more clear why they love social networking through the internet, because they can connect to everything. And it's a lot faster. And if in fact it is true that they're impatient, they can get their information much faster. Now those that may not be quite as into social networking, or maybe are doing it a little bit more reluctantly, are those of the baby boomers who were born from 1946 to 1964. They're very idealistic, they're competitive, and they have a huge strive to achieve. They're also very self-driven and like to be led to information. Now, once they have the information, there's no stopping them. But using social networks isn't always the easiest for them because they have to hunt for the information. But once they get it, you know, of course, look out. So they do see the value in it, it's just whether they really find the value in it um, all the time and whether they want to actually go out and actually hunt for the information. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about how to brand yourself online. You are being Googled probably as much as you are Googling others. Therefore, staying up on your online presence is critical to your career management. Now, unlike the old days where just going to a networking event um, provided you with a lot of contacts and it also allowed you to make a great first impression, you are now subject to others forming an opinion of you just by looking at what showed up when they Google your name. So it's a lot different than what many of us are probably used to. So it's not just about career management. Frankly, it's also about reputation management. Now, how you approach this is very dependent on your own career goals. Before preparing for the seminar, I didn't think having my LinkedIn profile updated was really that big of a deal because I wasn't looking for a job. 
But after doing all this research, I realized that people may be looking for me anyway, or my name may come up in one of their searches based on keywords that are in my profile. And so if my profile isn't updated, you know, future opportunities might not be available. And, you know, that just doesn't seem to make sense because you don't want your name to be crossed off of a list just because something's not updated. So let's start with a polling, polling um, question before we jump into some of this. So where do you have your resume stored? Social networks like Facebook or LinkedIn, job boards like Career Builder, your own company, because sometimes um, that is required at your company, um, a company or companies that you may be interested in, or maybe it's just a paper copy. And again, because this is a recording, I'm going to close. The results are obviously all zero. <clears throat> But what we found during the session is that there were a few people that had them on LinkedIn, a couple on the job boards, maybe one or two people with the company they work for and one or two on, on the company they're interested in, and then a few with the paper copy. It was select all that you can, um, all that applied. So there was definitely a wide range, but certainly there wasn't 100% on social networks. So um, hopefully we can see as we go through that having an updated profile, which can also be your resume, um, can yield benefits depending on what your career goals are. All right, so let's talk about specifically how you can brand yourself online. The first one is LinkedIn.com, and I'm going to talk about that in a fair amount of detail. So what I'd like to do is go through some of the other sites that might not be as familiar to you. I'll tell you, before I started this research, they were not familiar to me. So first is names.com, and what this does, it allows you to create a profile, and, but it allows you to point to other online identities, such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, so anywhere else that you may have other pieces of work that you would like people to see. Additionally, if you upgrade your account with this particular site, it will guarantee a first page placement on the leading search engines, such as Google. Um, so that, you know, if you are actively looking for a job, your name would come up first. The next one is businesscards.com, and this is a virtual business card that can be downloaded, um, and it is designed to show up in your search results. Um, what's neat about it is that you can um, include your bio, your recommendations, and attachments. Um, <clears throat> and what might be nice with this is that it, you can have, like, your resume presentation or articles and photos, so things that might be applicable to the particular career that you're working in. So if you're in marketing or sales where you might need some sort of brag book, um, this might be a real good option to you because then you can just have it right online. VisualCV.com takes your resume to the next level by allowing you to back up your achievements with proof of performance. So you can upload other documents that back up your accomplishments. The only thing I caution you here is to be careful with company proprietary information. Most of us can back up our resume, but it might be with presentations or other documents that technically are the company's. So just be careful that you don't breach any pol privacy policies that your company may have. And then finally, alltop.com. And it is recommended <coughs> excuse me, that you publish articles or post thought leadership blogs if, in fact, you are an expert in your field. Um, and this particular site, alltop.com, allows you to find websites and blogs um, that could be effective in reaching your target audiences that you do want to reach through your articles and your blogs. So um, if you are looking to start publishing or start to really get out your knowledge, that's probably a good place to turn to. So let's now talk about the most well-known and popular professional networking site, and that would be LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is the fastest growing professional networking site, which was founded in 2003. As previously shown, it has about 53 million members, but that was as of October. <laughs> so um, most likely, uh, there is probably closer to 60 now, since they are growing at 2 million people per month, which is about one profile per second. They are in 200 countries today, 
61% of their members are in North America, and 73% of their membership is 26 to 45-year-olds. So a lot of career transition or getting into their career at that age. IT professionals make up the largest part of their membership. However, that should not deter anyone from getting into LinkedIn and starting to make connections. Now, this is set up to be searchable. Um, there's lots of areas for keywords, for summary, for names, for experiences, which we'll see in a few minutes. And that is why on the previous slide, we referred to LinkedIn.com as Google Juice, because it is so searchable and it's so easy through Google to find what you're looking for. Additionally, there's about, um, when I was talking about they're in 200 countries, there's 11 million users in Europe alone now. And India is the current, currently the fastest growing country with almost 3 million users, which isn't surprising because India is obviously growing very quickly with so much offshoring happening with our companies. Interestingly, the Netherlands has the highest rate of participation among their population. So a few more statistics about LinkedIn. <clears throat> the average age is 41. The household income is over 100,000. 64% are male. 34% have some sort of smartphone or PDA. And what this really tells you is that they're technology focused and they want to stay connected. Most people that have a PDA or smartphone are those that really want to be connected 24-7. 80% have a college graduate degree or a, a postgraduate degree. What I thought was so important was 49% were business decision makers. And so obviously, that's huge when you're trying to find a job and you're trying to make a connection that's very valuable because you want it to be the decision makers in the company. And then 6.5% are vice presidents. So you can see that the people that are on here could be very influential and could be very beneficial to you, especially when you start to make contacts through some of your contacts. So let's now talk about how to brand yourself on LinkedIn. Even though I'm focusing on LinkedIn in this particular presentation, I'm only doing that because it is the fastest growing and the most popular professional networking site. However, what I would recommend is that you take the ideas that I'm talking about here and apply them to any other sites that you feel are beneficial for your particular career goals. So <clears throat> the first thing you would do in the LinkedIn is to create your profile. And this is really about putting in your employment, your education, activities, maybe a website that you have, obviously your online resume, or, and, and if you have a resume, you can actually upload it into LinkedIn. So what this does become is your online resume. You also may want to consider a photo. Now, some people may be a little reluctant to um, actually put in a photo, although I thought, you know, after I read the research, it made a lot more sense because it connects you a little bit more with the people. And if you want to connect to other people's connections, sometimes that photo really helps um, just giving that familiarity. That was one of the reasons I put my photo at the very beginning of this presentation was just so that you had an idea of what I look like since I was going to be talking to you for an hour. One recommendation I have, though, is to put the same picture wherever you have your um, information that outside people are going to see. Maybe not, maybe your Facebook picture is different if you're going to use that for personal reasons, but your photos should be the same in all your professional sites. So for me, you know, I use the same photo today that I have on LinkedIn, and that's the same photo I have in my company profile. You also want to have keywords and skills documented within LinkedIn. Um, specifically, um, you put that in your resume so that the recruiters can easily find you through the search function. As I mentioned before, LinkedIn was made to be searchable. And so they have this area for the keywords. And what I did, and you'll see in a moment, is I actually put the key areas of focus that I particularly work in. So that if anybody's trying to search on those words, my name would come up. You also want to build your network. So you want to connect, connect with other members whom you trust, and also have a business relationship. This is not the place to connect with everybody you know. It should be your professional contacts for the most part. 
So this isn't a place where, like Facebook, where they have contests to see how many friends you can get in a period of time. Um, this should definitely be more narrowly focused, um, again, to focus on your career goals and what you want to make LinkedIn for you from a career management perspective. You also want to get recommendations where you can. Many of us may know the days when we would call a friend and say, hey, listen, X, Y, and Z company may call you to get a recommendation on me. Do you mind giving it to, you, to them? Now you can actually do the recommendations right in LinkedIn. And um, I recently did that. You'll see my recommendations. The one thing I would suggest, though, is make sure that you're <clears throat> indicating why you're asking for that recommendation and not just asking for it blankly. Even though you might not be looking for a job, it might be worth just looking to see what's out there. This will help you determine whether are you still marketable, do you need to change your profile a little bit to keep yourself marketable. Um, it, doesn't, it just doesn't hurt to see what's out there and what's um, maybe what the, the biggest, the more popular flair is in your particular industry. And then finally, there's a section within LinkedIn, um, it's called Answers. You might want to consider this if you want to keep your profile active. And being active just means that it continues to be part of the search process. Um, and this just increases your visibility if you're answering questions that are posed on LinkedIn. And so we'll see in a moment when we go through my profile where People just pose questions, and if you have some expertise in that area, you may want to answer the question. Um, the only thing I would say is <clears throat> don't post questions that are just for fun. Um, I don't think that really adds any value. And don't answer a question if you don't really have, you know, a true knowledgeable opinion or some expertise in the area. Now, LinkedIn is a great site if you are changing careers because you don't have to focus on past experiences but rather you can really focus on your current competencies in your profile, and we can go through that. You may also want to consider having two resumes to send to potential employers, one which is an experiential resume and one that's a functional resume. So if you are changing careers and you don't want to just dwell on your past experiences, it might be worth having more of a functional resume so you can focus on how your skills and knowledge and competencies really um, fit to the particular position that you're looking for. Okay. So now I'd like to take you through my profile. I'll be honest, it took me this seminar to have to take me back to my profile and really update it, as I mentioned in the beginning. And until I really started to do this research, I really had no idea how influential having this profile could be. I'm very happy at my current job. However, I do live in a different state from my corporate headquarters. So in my opinion, it's probably worthwhile having my resume or my online profile updated in case a good opportunity happens to come around within my state of Indiana. Okay. Okay, so here is my profile. <clears throat> you can see I have the same picture that I had um, previously at the beginning of this presentation. And this essentially is my public profile, I, I think. You can connect on your public profile down below. But I think it's our uh, director at Unisys. That's my current position. And then I do have all my past positions at Unisys as well. You can click on See All to see where else I was um, working. I would recommend, just like with any resume, that your most current positions that are, you know, what your career management or career goals are all about, be outlined in your resume. Some of your older positions may not need to be um, as, uh, you don't need to go back as far in your older positions. So when you go down into my um, profile, I'll show you what I did for my, one of my earliest positions. You can see your education here, I went to St. Joe's and Villanova. And then I have some recommendations that I'll take you through. I have 96 connections. Now, the one thing that I have not done is a summary yet, and partially because I'm not looking for a job, so I don't really have, I haven't really thought through what my career <laughs> goals are going to be, but that's really what your summary should be about. But something new that I did do was put my specialties in, and this is where your keywords are. 
So my specialties are around project management, workforce planning, performance management, and operational excellence. Those are the primary areas of the job that I do today. I then have um, all of my experience, um, and I have recommendations against my first my most recent position, which again is um, an HR director. And then I have my most recent HR positions um, here, as well as when I was in resource management. And the reason I have all of these positions outlined here is because this is where my career is heading. It's going to continue in HR. Whereas previously, I was a project controller and then a public auditor. And so, in particular for Anderson, I started there in September of 92, right after college, and I was there for nine years. Um, but I only put that I was a senior manager. I wasn't a senior manager for all those nine years, but I think most people who understand public accounting know that you continue to make um, gradual progression through the company. So senior manager, manager was my last position with the company. You can also see here that I really just have a quick little blurb about what my position is. So this is a little different than a resume, because if you had a resume, you'd probably be documenting a bit more about your accomplishments in each of those areas. So even though this is your online resume, for all intents and purposes, you should obviously have your more um, detailed resume that has your accomplishments in it. Then it goes down to more details about your education. And then here are the recommendations that I have here. Now, what I had mentioned, um, I think I had mentioned earlier, maybe not, when you get your recommendations, you want it to be people that were, were trustworthy and influential within your um, position. And so what I did is I purposely went out to people at Unisys or people that used to work at Unisys, um, who I worked for, who worked for me, and who are my peers. So an example is this person, Elizabeth, is a peer of mine. And we work very closely together on a number of projects. This gentleman, Steve, I worked for. He was the vice president of HR for the business unit that I support. And then Gary is another peer. And Aaron is someone who works for me on a project right now. So I think that's very beneficial to actually have a variety of recommendations so that people can see that you weren't just going out maybe to your friends to get those recommendations. Now, if you want to um, <coughs> join groups, which I highly recommend, you can see here all the groups that I'm involved with. And many of them are just the, the organizations that I'm closest with. So Villanova Alumni Association, obviously want to stay in contact with not only my classmates, but others that might be in my field of expertise. I actually started to get to know Unisys through someone that went to Villanova. Um, and I found them on our alumni directory and reached out to him. And this was back in the early 2000s. Obviously, I want to stay connected to Kappa. There's lots of good resources within Kappa. <coughs> within Kappa. I also stay connected to the alumni, um, two different alumni organizations of Anderson, of Arthur Anderson. And um, you know, even though the company no longer exists, all the alumni that was that was there still does. So it's very important, in my opinion, to stay connected with them also stay connected with people at my current company. And then the last two are two human resources groups that I recently joined um, that keeps me up to date on things that are happening within the HR community, as well as having a connection for people that I may need to reach out to if I am, in fact, doing some research. Now, as I said, this was sort of my public profile. <clears throat> if you want to edit your profile, you just hit Edit My Profile, and then you can go in and add positions, add websites. You can see here, um, you can also add your Twitter account. And if you actually use your Twitter account, the tweets that you do can actually be uh, transferred over to, to LinkedIn, and that continues to make your profile very active. And that's really what it's about, is keeping your profile active so that it remains searchable. Now, I had mentioned earlier about groups, and this is where you can go to actually you know, get into a group or um, create a group of your own. We also talked about finding jobs. So this is where you can go in and find a job based on key searches. And then the more section is where we were talking about answers or, and, and events. So answers is if you click on answers, you'll actually see the questions that have been posted and um, you know you can go ahead and answer if you would like to. 
to just take a look at some of the questions that are out there. And you know, some of them are a little bit more probably generic, like has following your dreams become passe? Um, so you know, some things you could probably answer, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, without it being a big deal. But there's other ones that will be out there, you know, that could really use your expertise. And then you can also go into events. If there's any events you'd like to join. Um, oftentimes you'll see events that other people within your contact list have attended. And so that could be beneficial as well. This was a, a woman who I used to work with, and these are some events that she's attending. Um, I really kind of like this, and I'm interested to, uh, to see um, you know, what I could do and, and uh, what events I could attend. All right, well, I think that's it for the profile. So let's go back to, oops, let me go back to resume my slideshow. <laughs> So now that you're connected, I would suggest that you join groups like we talked about. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ones that you can join. As you saw with my profile, I would suggest joining groups that are a part of the groups that you already belong to, your own company, past companies, your college. Um, I don't know if you want to join you know, your high school group, if there is one, but for those of you that might have gone to a very large high school, it may, in fact, um, be viable. Um, but, you know, what you want to do, too, is you may not want to post information on those sites right away. You may want to wait and see how other members are communicating. If you see that it's very casual, then it might not be a big deal to actually start connecting. Um, but if you see if it's more formal and much more knowledge that you might have, you might want to hold back before contributing. Because you really do want to post knowledge that's going to be beneficial for others and not just there to kind of make your name known. Now, if you think about it, this really isn't much different than how we do in-person networking that you do today. Um, you know, you're just doing it online. Now, you know, you will need to practice. You will get, have to get comfortable with doing it online. And you will need to make the time. I'll be honest, this is my biggest challenge right now because of how busy my workload is, family commitments, and other outside commitments. But you just need to make the time, especially if you are actively looking for a job. Next, you want to post updates and keep your profile active. And it really does make you more visible if, in fact, you're posting updates and um, it kind of, kind of puts you up to the top of the list, I guess. I mentioned that if you do have a Twitter account, if you link your site, the tweets actually keep your LinkedIn profile active. And, you know, again, you want to share information about yourself that's going to benefit others, not just for self-promotion. So maybe sharing an article around your area of expertise um, or maybe the industry that you're in that could benefit others is, is some things that you could, could post. We talked about answering questions. So in the answer section, you, if you answer sections, this too keeps you visible. Um, and again, just find a topic of interest to you and you know, provide a response. And this will show up as news um, in quotes about you right on your LinkedIn site. You also want to share your work where you can. So you can upload presentations, other files that will back up your profile. Um, and then again, as we talked about earlier, make sure your presentations are not company confidential. You do not want to open yourself up to any lawsuit or a firing. And there are a lot of lawsuits going on with LinkedIn because of how companies are using information from LinkedIn or how you know, things are being posted, um, like company confidential information. So you do have to be fairly careful about that. And then finally, attend online events. Um, find an event that might be interesting. I actually just saw one as I pulled up my LinkedIn profile that I think I may take a look at and see if it would be worthwhile attending. So just find something in your area of expertise and attend it if you have the time. Okay. The next few slides <coughs> are a checklist that really help you sweep your web trail. The ladders.com is a website targeted at jobs in the 100,000 plus range, um, but it's also a very good source for much of the research I found about social networking. This in particular checklist I think is an excellent way to clean up your web trail. So I want to walk through this now, and the link to the checklist is down below, and um, you can 
document that and go ahead into the ladders.com. You can also just go into the ladders.com and do a search for it and it comes up pretty pretty quickly. So from a social networking perspective, the web cleanup that you would do is in LinkedIn, you know, just go through and check to, to ensure all of your information is accurate as well as updated. You want to make sure that you're inserting keywords like in that specialty section um, that would be important to the job that you're seeking or the job that you're in currently that you do enjoy so that you could open up some possibilities for yourself. And also check the contact me section. If you would like to be contacted, click that so recruiters know. I will say that many recruiters search LinkedIn, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes, um, but they may contact you even if you have the contact um, box not checked. I talked to one of the recruiters at my company, and she said, yeah, every once in a while when we find somebody really good, we might contact them even, they, even though they say not to. Now, from a Facebook perspective, a little bit more complicated because many of us use that from a personal perspective. So if you are going to keep your profile visible for anyone to see, again, you want to make sure that it's accurate and updated and has your complete work history if, in fact, you're using it for professional reasons. Again, type in keywords that would be beneficial to you. Now, this is what's the most important thing. You want to go to your privacy settings. If you are using Facebook for professional purposes, you want to obviously have everyone can see your Facebook profile. If you don't want to see it and you want it only to be for your personal life, you should limit it accordingly. Also in the privacy settings, you want to check your public search listing to find out um, who might be searching for you on the, on the search engines um, to see if you're coming up or not. Now, one thing we might recommend is if you do want to use Facebook for professional purposes, you might want um, separate friend lists or at the very least two separate profiles one that is for professional purposes and one for that is for personal purposes. If you have photos, again, go to your privacy setting page and you know, change, um, change it so maybe no one other than who's in your network could actually see it. Um, there may be embarrassing photos of you or your friends don't delete them and you just don't want people to see them. Um, there are Facebook applications that um, you may want to alter these settings depending on what the applications are that you have that you don't want people to see. And then obviously your wall posts, there could be some information that you don't necessarily want people to see of you. So again, you might want to limit this. Again, I think the best thing for you to do is have a personal and a professional Facebook account if in fact you want a Facebook account that recruiters can see. Next are the job boards. And the job boards are like careerbuilder.com, monster.com. A lot of them are starting to fade um, <coughs> than from you know, previous years. But again, you might want to check the ladders, because that's a, a job board, or any other job boards that feature your resume to ensure your information is correct. So you, know, you may have a resume out on one of those job boards from years ago that could still be coming up in a search that really isn't updated or um, could have a lot of outdated information that could be harmful. So, the best would be just to, you know, update them or just delete them. Again, you want to have um, keywords um, that are important to you when you're looking for a job. And again, look at the contacts area. So the job boards, a lot of the web trail is very similar to your LinkedIn cleanup. If you have any other online profiles, like in MySpace, again, just to make sure that they're accurate and updated, or you want to delete them because it's just nothing that's of importance to you anymore that needs to be out there. Rapleaf is a cool um, group or, you know, because if you can't remember what sites you've actually joined, you can, Rapleaf can actually associate your various email accounts to the various sites that you may have content on. So that's a nice way just to see if there's anything out there that might be embarrassing or outdated that you don't want people to see. Obviously, Google. Um, it's worth Googling yourself. Since I told you earlier, people are Googling you. I did this for the first time in many, many months, and fortunately, all that came up was my LinkedIn profile. Um, so the other thing is don't settle, though, for the first 10 results. You may want to go down a little bit further, because sometimes the results are just date-driven. So um, you also might want to associate your name with any past employers, because sometimes employers are delayed in getting updates to their site, like their directories or their um, 
uh, like where your name might have been for a particular position. So if, in fact, you're still in an old employer's site, you can ask them to remove you. You can also do a Google alert that actually alerts for your name or any terms that you would check in step one. So, um, you know, you could, you could do that if you felt like it was necessary. There's a couple search engines called PQ and YASNI that are targeted search engines that can actually, um, you know, look for websites with your name. Um, and then you can look to see, you know, the rele relevancy of the results will depend on how common your name is. So um, it might be worth doing. You might not have that many that it's that, that much required to do. Photos and videos. As you can imagine, and we saw it in that video that we saw from Socioeconomics, the beginning of this presentation, there are sites um, that we put a lot of pictures on, Flickr, YouTube, Facebook, <coughs> your Kodak gallery, Yahoo Video, lots of different places. You want to clean this up. And sometimes you don't have a lot of control over it because people are tagging you in pictures and you don't even realize it. So you want to just go through it and make sure that it's not visible. If it is visible, is it anything embarrassing? Um, just be careful. Again, you just want to make sure things are censored so that you don't put yourself in jeopardy in trying to find a position. And then finally, your blogs. If there are already blogs out there that you might be contributing to, um, or maybe a blog that might reference you in a particular industry, again, you just want to make sure that there's no unfavorable information about your images or what's out there is actually true. Now, Twitter is the fastest growing, fastest moving social networking technology that can really spread information about you pretty quickly. And we're going to touch briefly on Twitter in a few minutes, not that long. But you might want to search your name on Twitter just to see what other people are saying about you. Now, again, it hasn't gotten that popular yet that it might not matter. But um, again, it is an area that your name could be mentioned because it's a very quick social networking type of a site. And then finally, you need to clean it up. <laughs> so if you do find anything that you want to edit or um, there's something about your company or something that you're associated with that you don't want out there, try to clean it up. So fix it yourself if you can. Um, ask you know, your companies or other friends to try and remove you um, from whatever you don't want out there, whether it's the name, you know, a, a, an About Us page that still lists you as a managing director, or a friend who posts embarrassing photos of you. Now, if you can't get anything off of a site, just be prepared to defend it. Because as we're going to see, recruiters are using these sites. So we do want to be careful about what we're posting out there. All right, so let's move on to how recruiters are um, using different social networks. So now that you have an understand of how, understanding of how to brand yourself and all the statistics that go around social networking, how is this really going to help? Well, recruiters see the technological social networking thing that's going on now as critical to their recruiting strategy as job referrals and, and other things. So they're getting quite savvy with how to use the different sites. And we saw some of the statistics earlier that indicated 72% of the plan, um, or 72% of the companies plan to invest more in recruiting through their social networks. And 80% of the companies are planning to use social networks to find or attract candidates. Now, I'll say from firsthand experience, my own company, in our own company, our recruiting group, had a one-hour webinar on how Unisys is going to use online recruiting. And it really highlighted how serious we are about this you know, as, as a company, as a whole. So let's discuss how they're doing this. But first, let's take another polling question, because it's been a while. How many of you have been contacted by a recruiter um, through an online social network? So yes, no, we're not sure. And again, this is a recorded session after our main session. So I will say that um, since you can't see the results, only one, uh, I think it was 14% said yes, and the rest all said no. I think there might have been one person that said not sure. So um, again, it's still new. It also depends on how active you are from a career setting or a career management perspective, and if you really are going out there and um, keeping yourself searchable for um, the uh, jobs online so that the recruiters are actually finding you. So don't be fooled. You are being followed. 
Um, maybe not that much or that often, but if you are looking for a job and have gone through an interview, the likelihood is you have been Googled. Now, hiring managers like having social networking outlets because they can get a much broader picture of the individual. LinkedIn is recommended as the site to go to first for hiring managers since it's 100% professionally based. Now, interestingly enough, they also think they will find their best talent on social networks. Now, the reason for this is because many on LinkedIn are not necessarily looking for a job. They're just, they just want to be connected. But given that they're on the site, they seem to be open to networking and opportunities, and they're more technically savvy than others, it seems to be a good place to look for candidates. Now, if they're not looking as well, they're also probably not putting their sites on job boards or in the company databases. So again, they're kind of hidden from the recruiters. So the recruiters feel that this is a great way to find their best talent. Now, as shown earlier in the stats, six-figure earners are, actually, um, are more, most active on the social networking sites. However, that should not deter you <laughs> if you're not in the near that earning potential yet. Recruiters also say that the social networking sites are incredibly useful for hiring college grads because they're much more technologically savvy than the average hire, and most likely they, too, are on these social networking sites. Now, recruiters are often purchasing licenses, which allow them to actually expand their searches beyond their own contacts. So they may, as I mentioned earlier, actually contact you, contact you even if you say, don't contact. So just know that recruiters probably have a bit more of a leg on you in, these, in the social networking sites because of what they're paying for. Now, even if a hiring manager didn't find you on a networking site, they will probably use it after the fact. So your profile may influence the hiring decision of that manager. So what this means is you need to be careful about what you're posting on Facebook or making sure your privacy settings are secure. And then note that recruiters shouldn't solely use the information that they find on social networks to actually make a hiring decision. There is a lot of litigation, as I mentioned before, happening right now in cases where that may be happening. But just know that most likely it is influencing their decision. So some companies are much more active on social networks than others. And some companies still invest in job boards and search companies in order to find their talent. But others are starting to really weave online social networking into their recruiting strategy more effectively, which we've touched on previously. So there are passive user um, social networks. Um, and what this is is that they set up a site or a recruiting page with just enough information to be attractive to a potential candidate. And then ha they, ha they then enter their contact information so that the recruiter can reach them directly. Now, some recruiters are much more active. And what they're doing is they're actually trolling the social networking sites to look for their candidates. So, they really rely heavily on those keywords that we were talking about, as well as the skills that potential candidates may have in their profiles in order to find the right candidates. So make sure that you stand out if you really are trying to find a job. You want to make sure that you're documenting your key experiences, your keywords, skills that you have that are very relevant for the positions that you're looking for. Now, additionally, companies and recruiters are using Twitter much more often to promote their company and the activities that are going on. They are sharing recent news, advertising career fairs, promoting job openings, as well as providing key links to their other websites. Now, because of the time that we have left, I'm not going to show you Unisys's site. You can um, look at it on your own if you'd like. But Really what you should know is if you are actively looking for a job and if you are actively interested in a particular company, follow them on Twitter because they are posting very recent like wins, sale, sales wins that they have, <clears throat> um, new products that they're um, developing or that they've launched. And those type of things are really important when you're in an interview because you can actually show that you're following the company and you're very interested. So how is it best, oops, 
excuse me. I forgot I had a polling question, so. Oops, actually I'm going to go back a page, I think, if I can. Bear with me for a moment while I get back to my page that I was just looking through. So, go down. Okay, my apologies there. So, how best is it to interact with the recruiters online? First and foremost, you want to make sure that if you're using your Facebook professionally, you have a separate professional account so you don't have to keep balancing your personal and professional account. You probably won't want you know, pictures of your latest formal or your wedding, and that's what I have up a lot of my pictures on Facebook or my wedding. Um, you, in most cases, whether in job searching or anything, you probably want to keep your prof professional and personal sites um, separate. Now, from a career management perspective, just, you know, always the separation of professional and personal areas is always a good idea. You want to answer questions, post questions, join groups on LinkedIn because it keeps your profile more active and more searchable and visible, which we were talking about earlier. It then kind of takes you to the top of the list when they are doing searches. If you do get contacted, be responsive. Even if you're not interested, it might be best to let them know and maybe know why. And although we haven't gone into depth about Twitter, as I mentioned before, I would recommend following companies that you're interested in. This really keeps you current on what's going on and it prepares you better for the interviews and informal discussions that you might have. Bottom line, it makes you more marketable. And then finally, make sure you're contacting your contacts often. So don't be a pest, but let them know that you're still interested. Send them an article that you saw in the news or maybe something that you saw on Twitter and send it to the recruiter or the hiring manager so that they know that you're still thinking of them. So now we'll go to the polling question. Do you plan to look for a job or make contacts through a social network in the future? Yes, no, or not sure. And the results from this survey were, um, there was a couple yeses, a few no's, and a few not sure's. So because we had a fairly diverse group on the phone the night of the actual webinar, um, we had a number of people that were actively job searching as well as some that probably weren't. So there was a variety of responses on this particular question. So final thoughts. Before, um, before I get into this slide, I do want to just say that you want to treat online networking as you would any regular networking. You know, many of you feel more comfortable with face-to-face you know, face to face at professional meetings or mentoring others. But over time, hopefully you'll feel that comfortable with your online networking as well. Because frankly, it is the wave of the future. <laughs> so now that you have an idea of how to online network, here are a few tips so that you can do it better. Um, you know, make sure that you follow the guidelines on this slide so that you can ensure that being as professional as possible when you are making your online contacts. So first, don't drop the ball. You want to follow through. So if you've made a connection, with someone sort of outside your contacts, maybe a connection through a connection. If you've set up time to meet, you know, meet them, keep the appointment or reschedule. Be flexible. You know, the people that you're connecting with are probably very busy. We saw that these are highly influential people that are on this site. So again, you know, work with their schedules if possible and respect their time. Um, so maybe they can't meet you when you'd like to, so just be as flexible as, other, as um, possible. Don't be lazy. When you send a person, um, <coughs> excuse me, you want to send a personal note to someone you are trying to connect with. A lot of these sites have the canned note that goes along when you're trying to make a connection. If you can, send a, a nice little personal note to them so that they know that you're interested and you're not just clicking a button. Don't be pushy. If you've just started to network with someone, don't try and push a product or push yourself on them too quickly. You know, let that relationship form just like you would with any other relationship. And also don't take advantage of your relationships. You know, there could be someone out there that you just thought that they have a connection with a company that you um, want to try and get into. Well, don't connect with the person and immediately just say, hey, can you connect me to so-and-so? You know, again, it's all about forming relationships and you don't want to um, use the relationship for that sole purpose. And then give and take, probably the most important. If you're asking others to help you out 
offer to help them out and reciprocate when asked. That could be through references or connections, anything like that. Additionally, you want to be careful. Um, as with any online surfing, you have to be. Users of Facebook and Twitter have had a 70% increase in spam and cyber attacks over the last year. Additionally, 57% have reported receiving spam through the networking sites, which is a 71% increase from 2008, which came from an IT security company study. 36% of the users say that they have received malware. And what malware is, it's any software that infects and damages a computer system without the owner's knowledge or permission. <laughs> and they've gotten this through the different networking sites. So unfortunately, what has been found is that hackers can do this 10 times more effectively um, through the social networking site than through email. So the bottom line is be careful when you open your messages and be sure that you periodically pre um, check your privacy settings on your site so that you can see what's happening on there. So the last polling question is, Oops, I'm so sorry, I just <laughs> um, went to my next slide, but here we go. Um, are you going to, uh, or I am going to create an update, um, my LinkedIn profile tomorrow, I'm woefully behind, in the next few weeks as I'm actively searching, in the next few months as I'm not actively job searching but want to stay visible, and never, I'm not job searching and don't need to be visible online. And what the um, results showed the night of the webinar was that, um, a couple people had said that they were going to do it pretty quickly, but tomorrow I'm mostly behind. But most said in the next few months since they weren't actively job searching at this point. So at this point during the webinar, I did ask for questions, and one person did ask if the, um, these sites were available to people in Canada. And I would say that most sites are worldwide now, and they should be available to anybody in any country. Um, they may not be as well used as maybe in the United States, but overall they, um, they are available to anybody worldwide. Since there were no more questions, I will go on to my contact information. Kim Marabelli at kman at hotsheet.com, 610-212-2516. I thank everyone for attending this presentation. I hope you found it valuable, and best of luck if you are, in fact, looking for a job. Thank you.